So I wanted to record a video for those people that use a dynamic uh, electricity tariff, something like an Octopus Intelligent Go. Octopus have a standard um, smart tariff called Octopus Go, which gives you a cheap rate between, I think it's 12.30 midnight till 5.30 a.m. And it's the same time every single day that your cheap rate uh, is effective. So it's quite easy to combine your car charging with this, you know, two slot, two rate tariff. You set your car charger for the or your car, depending on what's controlling the charge, you set those to the same times that you do your Fox batteries. So that way the car charge the car charging doesn't just deplete your battery putting it into the car. So if you're on a uh, kind of pretty static off-peak, on-peak type of tariff, like an Octopus Go, then that's fine. Match the two settings and it works great. Where things get a li little bit more complicated is with the Intelligent Go product or similar tariffs provided by any other energy company. But we'll talk specifically about Octopus just because it seems to be the most popular. But when I plug my car in, so in my case, it's a Tesla Model Y. I come home, I plug my car in, and depending on a whole bunch of algorithms that Octopus take care of, they look at my desired state of charge for the car, uh, they look at the current state of charge, they look at the charging speed. I've got a 7.2 kilowatt hour charger, so just a normal uh, home charger for an electric vehicle. So they look at all of these different things, including energy price and whether the grid is green or not, and they create a charge plan. And that may be a plan that starts charging the car straight away. It may be that it charges a little bit earlier than the, uh, than the cheap rate. So with Intelligent Go, the cheap rate starts at 23.30, so 11.30 11 in the evening through to uh, 5.30 in the morning. You get that cheap rate, even if your car's not plugged in. But the problem is when you plug your car in and you get an earlier slot, your Fox battery isn't aware of that. And what happens is the Fox battery ends up just charging the car and emptying itself and then having to recharge itself during the overnight peak rate. Um, if you leave for work slightly later in the morning, you might find that your Fox battery is empty because between 5.30 and say 8 o'clock that power has just been dumped into your car. So what this video is all about is how I combat having or how I, I'm uh, leveraging a dynamic smart tariff to not only keep my batteries full and stop them from just being depleted into the car but how I don't have to do anything manually in order to control all of this. So there are some prerequisites. You do need to have um, integrated Home Assistant into your Octopus account so you can get the unit rate that is applicable to you at this exact moment. So Home Assistant calls out to Octopus on their API every, I think it's every minute, and says, hey, what's the current rate? And I also have a Modbus adapter on my two inverters to be able to programmatically control them. So let's have a look at what I'm sharing on screen right now. I'm showing you my octopus electricity rate. And you can see the difference between the low rate and the high rate. You can see that the low rate here dropped down to seven pence from, what was this, uh, midday until two o'clock in the afternoon. So that's just because the car was plugged in and octopus issued it a charging slot, probably because there was a surplus of wind energy or something. Um, you can see that yesterday evening, the cheap rate started at 10 o'clock instead of the the normal 10, sorry, 11.30. So because I'm getting this, this meter data or this, this current electricity price data, every 60 seconds, Octopus are going to be able to update Home Assistant with what the current tariff price is. And when that tariff price drops to off-peak, I use that tariff price in a number of integrations that I thought I'd share with you as well. So when the electricity price drops below 15 pence, 
I tell my inverters through Modbus to set the minimum state of charge on grid to 100%. Now that doesn't uh, cause them to force charge at full speed. On my K-series inverters, I seem to get about 2.2 kilowatt um, charge rate when I just increase the state of charge, the minimum state of charge above their current state of charge. But what's important by increasing the state of charge to 100%, the minimum, is that it's blocking the batteries from discharging. So every time my car's plugged in and Octopus give me a cheap slot, my batteries just charge at a slower pace. Uh, they charge at just over two kilowatts every time that rate kicks in. Then as soon as the rate increases back to peak rate, I do the opposite. I drop the minimum state of charge back to 10 so that my inverters that are in self-use mode can start to cover the house loads. And because this rate is typically being dictated by Octopus in combination with my car charging habits, these two simple automations mean that my car will never, my, my batteries will never dump power into my car because there's a little bit of coordination going on. Now I can still have the full speed charging set up as a force charge window within the Fox app. I could use the mode scheduler to also do this, but either the classic force charging or the, the scheduler, setting it from 23.30 till 5.30 a.m. for a force charge at full speed, that's great. That's a constant that's there every day. But these two easy automations, just to raise the minimum state of charge every time the rate drops to 7p, just solves all my problems. Now I could be a bit more creative. I could cause the inverters to charge at full speed every time the the rate drops. But right now I actually quite like just just topping them up slowly because these windows are typically quite quite long. It seems to work quite well, but if you don't want to manipulate the state of charge, you could be sending, you know, a full force charge, full speed command to your uh, to your inverters whenever the rate drops. So just thought that that's interesting. People, a lot of people ask questions about, well, how do I, how do I stop my car charging dynamic habits from impacting my battery storage? And this is a, a simple, easy way to do it. Really keen for your comments. What for you, you know, please comment on what you do. Do you do something differently? Um, do you set this up manually every time you plug your car in? Do you try to match charging schedules? And um, yeah, that's share ideas. Thanks.